Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I will talk about Waybar, probably the most used status bar for Hyperland, Sway or other Wayland based compositors. I will show you how I have configured Waybar for my Hyperland installation. You will learn how I have used the standard out of the box modules of Waybar, but also how you can customize Waybar even more with custom modules. Web developers will love Waybar because the styling of the module can be done in the CSS format or cascading style sheet that is also used to design a website. Referred to the Hyperland wiki, Waybar is one of the preferred status bar for this window manager. With special Hyperland modules that are included in Waybar, you can connect Waybar effectively with Hyperland. For example, you can show workspaces of Hyperland or the active title of a focused application. I had a lot of fun to set up Waybar for my Hyperland installation and the excellent documentation of Waybar helped me a lot. As always, you can find my Waybar configuration, my dot files on my GitLab repository. Download it, copy it, clone it, fork it, whatever you want. Let's start. Welcome to my Hyperland desktop. And you see on top my Waybar configuration. I gave Waybar a fully transparent background and a margin around it gives it a nice floating look and feel. Let me walk you through the modules that I'm using here in that configuration. On the left side, you see a custom button labeled with apps. And when I click that, Rofi pops up and I can start an application. The next module is called tasks and it shows all the running applications. So for example, when I switch to the second workspace and I open the Brave browser, you see that the Brave browser icon appears. And when I switch back to workspace number one and click now on the Brave icon, you see that the hyperlink switch to the second workspace and focus the Brave browser. Then a custom icon. So whenever I need a browser, then I can click the icon and the Brave browser pops up. The next is again a standard module of Waybar. It shows the title of the focused window. You see the mouse is currently over the terminal, but when I move the mouse to the Brave browser and focus Brave, then you see that the label changed and shows new tab. In the middle, you see my workspace indicator with nice transitions when I switch to another workspace. On the right side, I have here a custom module that shows me the available updates for my Arch Linux installation. Then the volume control, when I click it, then pulls audio, pops up and I can change the volume of my sound system. Then system information, this is a standard module of Waybar, but with a custom style. It shows 80% disk space is already used, 11% CPU and 8% memory. Then an icon, a custom icon, when I click it, W logout appears and I can log out, I can reboot, I can shut out my system. Then network information and last but not least, my clock. And you know, I'm a big fan of Pywall and all the colors that you see here in my Waybar are coming from the current wallpaper. When I switch my wallpaper, you see that also the colors in Waybar are changing accordingly. Now we are here on my laptop and you see on the right side of Waybar additional modules. This one shows the Bluetooth status. This is the battery status. And on the right side, you see that I'm connected wireless to my network and I have a 66% signal strength. If you want to install Waybar on your Arch Linux system, you enter sudo pacman dash as Waybar. To start Waybar with the launch of Hyperland, you need to 
open the hyperlint conf and add waybar, the start of waybar, to the exec once command. You see that I have defined for me a special script. With kill all waybar, I stop all current running waybar instances. And then you see here in the if statement that you can load different waybar configurations based on, for example, in my case, the username. If you're working on setting up your custom waybar configuration, I suggest that you add a key binding to your hyperlink conf to reload the waybar after a configuration change. You see here the binding, so super key in my case with shift and B executes the script yeah, that I've just showed you. So when I change something, I can press shift, super key B, and you see that the waybar is reloading and then showing up your changes. You define the waybar configuration in a folder waybar that you create in the folder dot config. The core waybar configuration consists of the file config and the style sheet. Let me open the config file. And you see that the configuration starts with the general settings and you can position waybar on the top or you can change it and use the waybar on the bottom. I save the file and reload waybar with shift super key B. And now the waybar is at the bottom. Let's undo the changes, save the file and reload it again. And now it's back on top. Here I include file modules.json. This is a file where I store all the configurations of my module that makes my um, waybar configuration a bit more structured. And here in modules left, you define the modules on the left side. The modules center are defined here and the modules right are in the section modules right. Waybar supports grouping of modules into logical groups. In my case, I have created a group hardware where I have added the modules disk, CPU and memory. And then I can add this group with one command into the right section of Waybar. Let's close the file and open the modules. And here you see all the modules that I use in my Weber configuration with all required parameters. The last file is the style sheet and the style sheet includes all the design definitions for the modules. I'm using many standard modules of Waybar. All the modules are very well documented uh, on the Waybar wiki page. Here you see all the Waybar modules that are coming out of the box after the installation. For example, the CPU or memory or the disk module, the network module, the battery module and so on and so on. All of these are standard modules. I'm using special hyperlint modules. So also check the section hyperlint here in the Waybar wiki. Um, there are special hyperlint modules for workspaces, for window, for language and submap. You see here my configuration of the hyperlint workspace module, but I'm also using custom modules and custom modules. You can define what the module is showing, how it looks like, and how it reacts. And I want to show you here first a very easy one, the Brave custom module that I have defined. So this button here on top, it, the format defines the icon. This is a font awesome icon. Yeah, font awesome. You can click here on an icon and copy the icon and paste it into your script. And then that icon appears and an on click event where I open Brave 
when I click on the icon, this is the module here, when I click on that icon, Brave opens. Another custom module is the launcher of Rofi, of my application launcher. And you see it here. On the upper left side, you see here the label apps. The on-click event is to start the app launcher script in the scripts folder. Let me open that script. And you see it's just one command. It starts Rofi in the dRun mode. And I click on apps and you see that Rofi is showing up. Another simple custom module is here my custom exit module. Again, an icon from Font Awesome, and with on click, I execute the command W log out. Let's try it out. I click on the icon, and W log out appears. Let's check a, a, a bit more advanced custom module. You see here the custom updates module that shows the available updates for my Arch Linux installation. The format is again in Font Awesome icon, and this is the position where the output from the script will shown that I execute and with an execution interval, with a restart interval of 60. Means, that means every 60 seconds, the script will be executed again and updates the output. The on-click event is then to start Alacrity and the script install updates. The format, and this is important, the return format, the return type is JSON. Let's open that script. You see here on top that you can define thresholds, it means the output is flagged with green when no updates are available. The output is flagged with yellow when more than 25 updates are available, and it's red when more than 100 updates are available. I receive the updates from Pacman with a check updates command, and the available updates from AUR I check with Trison. Then I sum up both values and I get the total updates number. And at the bottom you see if the number of updates are greater than yellow, means in my case 25, I define a class yellow. It's more than 100, then I define a class with red and the standard class is green. And here you see the output in the JSON format. So there are several parameters. The text will be replaced with the result of the updates. Also the alternative text, the tooltip text, and the last parameter is the CSS class that we have just defined here based on the thresholds. Let's give it a try. I overwrite the calculated updates with 30. So let's execute the script with dot slash updates. And now you can see here the output is a JSON format with the number 30 that I have defined here to override the update calculation. And when I now restart Waybar, you see here on top the yellow background and the number 30. And the same if I overwrite with 110 and I restart Waybar, you see now we have a red background because the number of updates is higher than 100. Let's disable the test again and reload. And now you can see the real number of available updates again. The look and feel of the Waybar modules will be defined in the style.css file and web developers will immediately see that these are standard style sheet commands. And here is, for example, the style sheet for my custom app menu, this one here on top, where I define a font size, the font color, the border radius of 40 pixel, the padding, the margins and the opacity. 
So there's a slight transparency on every module and the border of three pixel with the border color white. The background color comes from the wallpaper. Let me scroll to the top. You see here that I import a color scheme from the .cache.wall folder. And this color scheme looks like that. So 16 colors generated from the wallpaper. And when I change the wallpaper, you see that also here the values are changing. And I generate this file with a PyWall template. The templates will be defined in the dot .files folder, in the wall folder and in the templates folder. And here you see the template that I use for my colors of Weber. And it looks similar, but with placeholders. And all these placeholders will be filled by PyWall based on the background image, based on your wallpaper. And with that definition, you can, for example, set up the background color of that module based on your wallpaper. And with this configuration, your Weber will integrate very nice into your desktop. And this, of course, also works for the workspaces. So the workspace indicator here in the middle, where I define the background color of a button based on the wallpaper color. And the active state is defined here and the hover state is defined with a different color from the color scheme generated by PyWall. Coming back to the custom module that shows my the available updates for my Arch Linux installation, you define a style sheet for a custom module with the word custom and then the name of the module, so custom dash updates. And you see here the different definitions for the classes that are included in the JSON output of the script. So green means it's not green in my case, it's white. This is the yellow color and this is the red color. That was a lot of fun. And maybe I could motivate you to give Weber a chance or to use my dot .files to improve your existing Weber configuration. And with that, see you next time.